Pachinko is sadly coming to an end, with its last episode being released on April 29th, and while it was delightful to watch this series and go back in time, the actors had to do a lot of work to bring Pachinko to life. Tough auditions. Pachinko is truly a one-of-a-kind TV series that goes beyond what we and some of the cast members are used to. Due to its complex plot and deeply thought-out characters, it's no surprise that the writers and producers of Pachinko were very selective when it came to who would take which role. Auditioning for Pachinko was seriously no piece of cake, and I'm sure not everyone could have done it. So when the first behind-the-scenes information came out, everyone was shocked that even Lee Min Ho, someone who's considered an icon in the Korean filming industry, had to audition for this series. For the past 13 years, Lee Min Ho would get roles without having to go through auditions. Since he appeared in legendary shows like The Heirs, Boys Over Flowers, and King, The Eternal Monarch, he was known for his abilities and his legacy. That changed in 2022 when Lee Min Ho had to audition for his role for the first time in 13 years. Partially, it could be because of the role Lee Min Ho plays in Pachinko. He plays the character Han Su, a man that was adopted into a family of organized crime in Japan. This is so much different from his usual romantic and endearing characters. The screenwriter for Pachinko, Su Hyu, explained in an interview with Time Magazine, not only did the actors have to audition, they had to memorize like three scenes each, and each was about six or seven pages. Already, it shows who really wants it. Su Hyu also added that since she wasn't aware of Lee Min Ho's credentials and fame, he was treated just like any other actor that came to the auditions. She shared, and I didn't know how big of a star he was. Was. He was treated just like everyone else. He went through the same rigorous audition process. Lee Min Ho shared that he didn't mind having to audition for his roles as it reminded him of his early days as an actor and that he almost forgot about the process. But Lee Min Ho wasn't the only veteran actor who had to audition to be in Pachinko. Yoon Ya Dong, an actress whose acting career spans over several decades, had to audition as well and she wasn't particularly happy about it. She shared, It didn't make sense for me to audition after acting for decades. She then continued to explain that if she didn't pass the audition, people would point fingers at her and gossip about her failing her audition. She said, I couldn't lose my 50-year career for this one role, so I threw out the eight scripts I received by the front door. But auditioning for Pachinko wasn't a negative experience for everyone. With this TV series, Gi Min Ha landed herself the role of a lifetime because of her character of Sanja. Kokonara, the mononymous director who helped bring to life half of the show's episode shared, This is the role of a lifetime. So many talented, well-known actresses auditioned. We weren't out to find an unknown, but from Minha's first tape, we were captivated. Minha herself recalls the process as both challenging and exciting. She shared, The day of my last audition, I called my mom and said, If I don't get this part, I won't regret it because I did my best. In another interview, she shares, I poured my entire soul into auditions for three months. Through playing Sanja, I got the chance to reflect on myself. I learned a lot more than just acting. I learned how to vocalize, and I also learned about who I was. Well, Minha's hard work and determination seriously paid off, since, as we know now, she ended up getting the role and immersed herself completely into playing Sanja. Complex Preparations Those who have watched the show or have read the book know that Pachinko is extremely heavy on emotions and feelings, and the show aims to invoke something in the viewers. Through his own YouTube channel, Lee Min Ho talked about how exactly difficult it was to express certain emotions and other struggles he encountered while filming Pachinko. While showing the beautiful scenery in Vancouver, Canada, where the majority of Pachinko was filmed, Lee Min Ho confesses that his character of Ko Han Su is quite challenging. Lee Min Ho considers the part where he is expressing the emotions of someone who lived in a completely different area one of the most crucial parts of the show. Lee Min Ho explained, Portraying the emotions of an era when people were suppressed, lacked freedom, and had to survive was challenging too. Although this was a tricky and difficult thing to do, there wasn't any way around. The actors had to give it their all and try to bring their characters to life as best as they could. The actors having to find a way to make their characters as realistic as possible was kind of like an unspoken rule on the set. Another difficulty that Lee Min Ho had to work out was the preparations he did for knowing how to speak Japanese. Since his character relocated to Japan to start a different life, Lee Min Ho had to learn a few lines in the foreign language. He says, I had to act in a language I hadn't acted before. The actor added that since he had to learn it in a way shorter period of time than he usually does, he tried to do as much research as possible. Interestingly enough, Lee Min Ho shared that music helped him a lot with internalizing his role as Kul Hansu and understanding the era his character portrays. The actor shared, Whenever I had time to rest or think, I used my imagination to try to immerse myself in the era. The overall locations of the series were unfortunately met with some complications, which made the overall preparation time even harder. In the beginning, Soo Hyu initially hoped to film in both Korea and Japan, as well as Vancouver, but because of the COVID-19 pandemic, they had to cut out filming in Japan, except for some exterior shots. I'm sure the pandemic made the shooting a bit 
tougher as all the actors surely had to follow the restrictions and protective measurements. Thankfully, it all worked out well in the end. Difficulty with scripts. Since Pachinko tells a story of multiple generations that span over Korea, Japan, and the United States, I can't even imagine how difficult the scripts must have been. Yoon Ya Dong, an actress that has been on the scene for a few decades, expressed that her portrayal of Sunja, a Korean immigrant in Japan, is much different from her role of Sunja in the movie Minari, which is about Korean American immigrants. Soo Hyo shared a little behind the scenes information about the process of writing the show. She shared, including Solomon's story in 1989, it made it a chronicle of almost 80 years. That's why I had to work hard at researching historical documents. She also shared that she learned for the first time about Zainichi Koreans, who are ethnic Koreans that immigrated to Japan before World War II and the descendants of those immigrants. Soo Hyo explained that she and other screenwriters that worked with her got help from historical scholars and that they worked really hard to make a perfect script. Due to the intense historical relevance, Yoon Ya Jung was a bit worried at first. The actress shared, At first, I was worried because there were so many flashbacks. I was concerned about how it would look on screen, but when I saw the first episode, I was shocked. She added later on that since they moved between 1919, 1939, and 1989, she was concerned if the viewers would understand the timeline at all. She agreed with what the director Bong Joon-ho said, and that was that if the viewers can overcome the one-inch barrier of subtitles, there's a lot of interesting stories out there. Despite the scripts being full of information and historical facts, the actors could still relate to them. Lee Min Ho shared, There were many parts I could relate to while reading the script. There are often characters who seem to understand why they say things like this and behave like this in such a situation. There was a change in my attitude towards work. I'm sure it was no piece of cake to transform themselves into a time in history that not all of them lived in, but they still did such a fantastic job. Fashion Policy Undoubtedly, fashion in movies or TV series plays a huge role, and it's even more important when that piece of work is about history. Accurate fashion can truly take it to a whole new level as it helps the viewers to understand the story and the characters better. During a press conference for Pachinko, Lee Min Ho shared what it was like to play a character that lived in the 1930s and whose fashion is far from Lee Min Ho's style. The actor explained, As for my outfits, I personally poured out a lot of thoughts for them. Rather than considering outfits in that period of time as a simple styling, I think it's a means, a weapon to express myself more strongly. The actor also added that he used his fashion as a way to defend himself from the meaning of individual's clothing. He added, Han Su uses clothes to protect himself and to also express himself. I tried on a lot of different clothes. Through his clothes, Hansu changes his feelings and hides his identity. What's also interesting about Pachinko is how it explored the transformation of the traditional Korean hanbok. Before Korea was introduced to Western styles, hanbok was considered a simple everyday wear, which we can clearly see in the series. Even though Pachinko is something completely new, it has been receiving a lot of positive feedback, and I hope more people will find interest in the series. That's it for today. Let us know any thoughts and opinions you have on Pachinko if you're a fan or not in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Bye!